Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I am here today at the Rock Island Auction House. I'm taking a look at some of the guns that they're going to be selling in their upcoming September of 2016 Premier Auction. And one of them is another iterative step in the Beretta automatic pistol. I thought this would be a good one to take a look at. This is a model of 1923 Beretta. And as you'll see from the patent markings in a moment, it is the continuing legacy of the Beretta Model 1915 that started out in World War II, or World War I. Now, it is chambered for the 9 Glissenti cartridge. There was a Beretta model of 1922 right before it that was chambered for the 32 automatic. Uh, but as they had done before, Beretta decided to have matching, basically matching models, slightly different size, uh, of each gun in 32 and 9 Glissenti. 9 Glissenti was the Italian military standard cartridge at the time, or one of them. Uh, I identical in dimensions to the 9mm Parabellum, 9 by 19 but loaded substantially lighter, about 30% lighter. So Beretta, interestingly, Beretta claimed that these could safely shoot 9 by 19 ammunition, uh, 9mm Parabellum. And that really just isn't true. Uh, I think what was going on there was they had trouble selling these and they really wanted to get rid of them, and they figured a little white lie like that, you know, who's really going to be worse off for it? We'll just say they shoot nine parabellum and then people will buy them and then we'll be done with them. Uh, in total, they only made 10,400 of these pistols. They started manufacture in 1923, as the model number suggests. They started at a 300,000 serial number and they only manufactured them until like 1925 or 26. And what they did was make a big batch of 10,400 or thereabouts and then shut down the production and figured, okay, you know, when, when we need another batch, we'll, to, we'll set the tooling back up and we'll make another big batch rather than make them piecemeal as orders came in. Well, the problem was orders didn't really come in. Uh, and it ended up uh, being 1936 before they finally sold off the last of these things that they had made. So the, the big purchasers, such as they were, um, the biggest one was actually the Bulgarian military, which bought 4,000 of these in uh, 1926. The Argentine police bought a few hundred. Uh, the Italian uh, Forestry Service bought some. Uh, who else? The Turkish Navy bought a handful, but then decided not to adopt them. And finally, in 1936, the Italian Army bought 3,000, actually technically 3,007 of them. What's interesting is that Italian Army purchase came two months after they had signed a contract for like 150,000 uh, Beretta 1934 pistols, which are smaller, handier, kind of better in every way. So why would they have bought these right after buying a big purchase of better guns? And I think the answer there is collaboration between Beretta and the Italian government. I think Beretta said basically, look, we've still got 3,000 of these things that we're stuck with. We'd really like to get rid of them. Uh, we'll give you a good price on them. We just want to get rid of them. They, they work fine. You can give them to rear echelon units or guards or someone where it doesn't really matter that they're in nine glissenti instead of some newer cartridge. Uh, and I think the Italian government basically was okay with that. The Italian government was willing to uh, work with Beretta to mutual benefit. So the last major buyer was the Italian army. And of course they didn't produce any more. After production shut down in the mid 20s, that was it for these guys. Um, why don't we go ahead and bring the camera in. I'll pull this apart. It's pretty easy to disassemble. It has a couple of unique features to it, uh, including, most interestingly, the shoulder stock attachment, which is rare on these pistols. Right, so. All right, so I mentioned the shoulder stock attaching points. And those are down here at the very bottom of the grip. They're pretty rare to find on the Berettas, um, the 1923s. In fact, technically, uh, Beretta actually called the stocked model the Beretta 1924. Now, I don't have an example of the shoulder stock to show you, but it's basically a standard holster, as many of these stocks were, that has a metal bar that folds out and snaps onto the bottom of the grip. It's not one of the better stocked pistol designs, but uh, that's what they had available for this particular model. Now, these attachment grooves kind of work like a, um, an FN model of 1903 with a shoulder stock. You've got a thing that just snaps over these two rails on the bottom of the frame. Sometimes stocks attach down here. Sometimes on other guns, they'll attach on the back strap or even up in this area. But on the 23, it was right down there. Now the magazine catch is a heel model. Pull this magazine out. This magazine is identical and interchangeable to that of the model of 1915 Beretta pistols, which are also in 9 Glissenti. The biggest 
uh, innovation or development of the 1923 was the exposed hammer. This was the first of the Beretta pistols to have an exposed hammer, um, and it would continue to be a feature on the later models. So the 31s, 34s, 35s, and uh, really all the way through the Beretta pistols in use today. Also mentioned the grips. These are uh, stamped sheet metal grips, which were standard on the military versions of the 1923. The civilian or commercial sold guns would have wood grips with a little Beretta medallion in them. We can also see that military lineage in the RE stamp here. That's Regio Ejercito, or uh, Royal Army. And then you'll find that on the, the military guns. Our markings on the side here, pistol Beretta 9mm, Brevetto, which is the, the patent marking. 1915-1919, model of 1923. So same basic concept as the early guns, just uh, developed a little farther. The other side of the slide has the serial number, both on the slide and the frame. I mentioned these start at 300,000, they go up to 310,400, and uh, this would appear to be one of the very last of the bunch, which would uh, match, fit with it being sold to the Italian army. So controls, we really only have one other than the mag release, and that is the safety. So right here, this is, you can see the F exposed, that means that it is in firing position which allows me to fire. It is a single action only trigger. And if I put that up into safe, I can cock the hammer, but the trigger's locked. Now, in order to disassemble it, we actually start by putting it on safe, taking the magazine out, and then I need to lock the slide back, like so. The safety lever holds it in that little notch, and then the barrel pushes out the back, and then I can lift the barrel out. There's that. Then we'll deactivate the slide stop. The slide comes off the front of the gun. The recoil spring comes out. And then the safety lever comes out. So there is our disassembled 1915-19-23 Beretta. Now fitting with the 9mm caliber, um, this being one of the larger pistols that's feasible to make as a simple blowback system, Beretta did include a fiber buffer pad in here. This is in the same position as the spring-loaded buffer of the model of 1915 pistols. Oh, so that's certainly helpful, although not enough to allow you to shoot 9mm parabellum safely. The trigger mechanism is quite simple. There is a yoke around the bottom of the trigger. Uh, when it pushes back, there's a spring in the back strap right there. That pushes forward, which releases the hammer. Like that. You can see the that's the, the trigger bar coming out, allowing the hammer to drop. There is no half cock notch on this. If you uh, want it safe, you put on the safety. You can also point out here that this mainspring, which goes through the center of that recoil buffer, also acts on the safety here. So in addition to providing the tension for the slide, it also provides the tension for the safety. And because it's got that little center plug, when the spring is in place, it prevents that from happening, prevents the safety from falling out. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I like taking a look at the evolution of these designs over time. And the, the 1923 Beretta is one of the less common versions of that particular lineage. So. If you have a Beretta collection or you'd like to start one or you just like the looks of this particular pistol, take a look at the description text below. You'll find a link there to Rock Island's catalog page on this guy. You can take a look at their pictures and description and place a bid online or over the telephone or come here in person to participate in the auction. Thanks for watching.